Hello and welcome to Walker T Review. I'm Jason Walker here with actually two T's from the same company. So if you've ever had a situation where one company has one kind of tea, multiple grades, and you're not just sure which one, uh, sometimes you may be wondering, is it is it all just hype? Is there any real difference in different grades? So I'm going to kind of explore a little bit of that kind of idea today. Same similar tea, not there are very subtle differences and what I've got out to smaller guy ones as you can see not my usual three ounce size but uh, this will be helpful for comparing two teas like this and I'm scooping in just enough to really cover that bottom oh this time about about it um, an inch area of the base the bottom of that uh, of that smaller guy one there so this guy one is going to fill is going to be about one of these cups, and so I'll talk a little bit more about that. And I'm scooping up. I'm trying to eyeball it. I mean, I don't want really to have to go to the precision of getting out a gram scale, a scale and measuring by mass or weight. Although we you could if you were so inclined. But that should be a good amount right there. Take my uh, water that's been brought to a fairly early boil. Let me get some of this uh, uh, equipment out of the way here. Let me get this off to the side so that you can also see what's happening here. I'm going to pour, add some water to both. Put in a little bit, of, little bit of extra water so a little bit sits right above the rim of the lid when I put that on. That looks good. Fairly even amount of water. You know, just add a little bit of water, added water to one just a few seconds before the other. But uh, pouring from that one first will balance that out. Let me get to a little bit of this water that dripped out of the way here. And then we'll be able to talk a little bit about these two teas here. The one on my right, your left, is, uh, again, both of these are from the JK Tea Shop. That's jktshop.com. This one on my right here is the Mount Wudong Huangjishang. Huangjishang is, uh, can be translated as gardenia, or that's how they're la labeling it here. This is a Dansong Wulong from, uh, from southern China, Chaozhou area of China in Guangdong province. It's a 2011 spring. Uh, here in my left hand, your right, would be the 2011 uh, spring nonpareil Mount Wudong Song variety Huangjishang. Phoenix Dunsong. Okay, so what is the difference here? They're, well, they're both 2011s. They're both springs. They're both from the Chaozhou area, the uh, Phoenix area, Phoenix Dunsongs. They're both the same kind of Phoenix Dunsong. Where do they differ? Uh, grades. One is a premium. One is a nonpareil. Uh, this one is called considered a song variety. Now, there are teas that go back to the Song Dynasty, so these are hundreds of years old. Uh, so this, they as these this, as these trees are older, it means their root systems are more are deeper, more established. They're draw potentially drawing nutrients from deeper in the ground, and therefore potentially a a, a richer, uh, better, uh, better content uh, components in that tea. So that's what we're going to be looking at and considering is that is that necessarily true. Of course manufacturing process and processing can play a factor as well. Choosing picking at the right harvest time. Other things to consider. Now let me talk a little bit about prices here. The, the premium 15 grams available for $2.10. Uh, the nonpareil 15 grams $5.40. Now at 15 grams which of course is less than an ounce you may think, what's the bother? But if you're getting higher volumes, larger amounts, prices can uh, will increase along those. And you may be thinking, where do I draw the line? Where do I choose? How much do I want to? Will there be much difference in taste? Uh, and is it worth that price to, price difference to pay for that difference in taste? So, um, well, I can let this steep just a little bit longer, but uh, talk about these leaves for a moment. Talk about the dry leaf, the wet leaf, and the liquor. First off, dry leaf premium. Subtle, light, uh, at least initially. Uh, the, you know, the term is gardenia. They're both Huang Zhishang, both at gardenia. I don't necessarily pick up a, a significant 
if you ask me to smell a fresh gardenia and then go and smell this tea, I would not, that would not be my initial association between the two. There is, especially when you breathe on this tea and release some of the notes there, get some moisture and heat, they release some nice kind of tangy, fruity, uh, uh, peach um, combined with sour grape, maybe a little mango in there. There's a, there's a nice tart, fresh kind of fruity element there. This one has as well. So, I mean, at this point, aromas are quite similar. Um, uh, initially, before you breathe on the tea, you'll get some kind of a, a mellow, roasty type note. Uh, has some kind of sweetness there. Um, perhaps you would associate that with a gardenia. Now I am going to kind of pull out a few of these leaves. First off, I just kind of look at them side by side here. Um, looking down into the bags here and comparing my premium. L uh, they look like larger, um, wider, thicker, like they're not as tightly wound or they are larger leaves in general. They look a little bit longer, and they look a little bit uh, lighter brown. They're still, let me go ahead and pull out just a few of these. They are still a fairly rich, um, you know, deeper than ochre, um, but they are li generally fairly lighter brown, a little bit more on the rust reddish type color in comparison with the nonpareil, which gets moves a little moves more towards a uh, darker almost like a dark chocolate type color so this one goes it goes more towards the brown this one's a bit, a bit more towards the reddish elements there now um you know what i'm going to just kind of set these aside so that i can put them side by side so let's put that there moving on over here to the premium Pull out just a few of these here. Looking at them again side by side, these in general look to be a little bit more tightly wound, tightly wrapped along the length of the vein. Um, again, just as a glance uh, down into the bag here on, on the, the plate here, the saucer here, <clears throat> um, premium looks a little bit of a larger, longer leaf as well. Uh, again, these the nonpareil look a little more tightly wrapped, but I'm going to move and get into the, the liquor now. I think this is steeped long enough. I steeped, uh, of course, I'm steeping here, and now I've, I've also done off-camera tastings, which helped me to understand this tea a little bit more. Again, with a lot of oolongs, your first steep is not necessarily going to be your optimal steep. A lot of times the second steep, you will uncover things that you did not pick up in the first steeping. So first, uh, let me kind of move these off to the side so that you can see a little bit of that liquor. You can kind of be looking, making your own uh, judgment already based on what you see there. But I'm going to go ahead and talk about the sweat leaf here. There is something kind of more orchid type that I would not necessarily associate with. And I know there are going to be other teas in the Danzong area that have their labeled more sores as oak orchid, but generally I find this kind of orchid with a uh, peachy type note. Pulling out a few of these leaves and looking. Um, so aromas, I should say, you get very similar aromas, um, it just kind of comparing the two, the nonpareil gets a little bit more, gets a little bit more mellow, a bit more rounded, a bit smoother in its, uh, in its notes. It's got a little bit more of a, of a, uh, lightly and more uh, smoothly toasted, I guess would be the words to use there. Pulling out a few of these leaves, they have they can gently be unfurled and teased apart with a mo uh, it, you know, with a little patience and time there. I'm kind of pulling that one. I'm not going to pull it completely open, 
but you'll be able to see some colors there. I'm seeing fairly dark, there's still a lot of dark green, uh, the blotching of uh, the oxidation, the, the rust type colors, they are appearing on the outer edges of the leaves there. Let me pull out a few of these. Again, looking down into these two cups, my premium, they have loosened up quite a bit more in relation to my, uh, my non-parel here. Again, still more, generally more tightly wrapped, tightly wound. So uh, you can still, you can also see some browning along the edges there, still that rust type color. Looking at the two, the, the nonpareil leaves are uh, a, still a, a deeper, richer, uh, more towards a, an olive, drab, greenish, darker, br uh, slightly brownish there, uh, as compared to a more almost uh, greenish with a tinge of yellow to the olive drab in the, in the premium. So it appears, I would also get the conclusion, draw the conclusion that, of course, the varietal, the source of this tea is different. I should mention a little bit before about that source of tea. Although they are both from the Guangdong, uh, Chaozhou area, uh, you can go down to the specific village for the premium. Village is the Guanshu village. The Nanparel village is the Li Ping village. So slightly different uh, and those villages can be different elevations or altitudes on that uh, on that uh, mountain the phoenix mountain there so location has played a f potentially played a factor here um, the age and source of the the the, the tree the, the bushes themselves are a factor of course but i also it also appears that processing is a factor here tightly more tightly wound versus a little bit uh, less tightly wrapped, a little bit easier to unfurl. Um, color as well, again, the, the pluck of that leaf, but also the way that that tea was oxidized and, and that, those, those, that oxidation process was stopped and that leaf was preserved. So moving on then, talk about these two liquors. Very similar in color here. Uh, a little bit more, a little bit uh, richer, a little bit brighter, a little bit more reddish in the nonpareil here. Let me pour both of those, see if I can do a two-hand pour here. That looks good. Still a nice, sweet, tangy, um, again, peachy, mango, zesty type note. This one has it as well, but it's mellowed. It does get a little bit more, a little bit more floral, a little bit more uh, toasty, sweet kind of notes. If you had that peach and you, you had grilled it or toasted it, there's some of those kind of notes coming out as well. Let me go ahead and give this uh, premium a try here. Fairly smooth. Um, again, those, those aromas are carried out into the cup. There's still that kind of zesty peach. Astringency is there. It's not over. It's not uh, overpowering or really harsh. Although this camera, this tasting, off-camera tastings, the astringency um, and the, the the feel of the of the tea sits more in the in the front third of the mouth. Okay. Aromas and intensity, I would give lean ever so slightly towards the nonpareil. Just a little bit, a little bit stronger, a little bit mellower, a little smoother. Uh, smoothness, talking about that part, uh, texture, aftertaste. This one is a little bit gentler, a little bit smoother. Where the other, the aftertaste tended to, and the astringency kind of tended to sit towards the front of the mouth, this, the front third. This is more in the middle third. It's moving back a little bit more. It has a bit more, in the aftertaste, it has more sweetness to it. Um, the, the premium 
gave a bit more of a, of a dry type of feeling. This one has a, a gentle, a gentler dryness, and then gets builds more of a little bit of a sweetness there. So, putting these two teas together, taste-wise, if you're just looking at aromas and taste, you're not going to find that uh, a significant amount of difference. But if you then go on, you talk about the texture, the aftertaste, the feel of the tea after it, after you swallow, or as you as you swallow, and then afterwards, you're going to pick up more mellower, smoother differences here in the nonpareil. It's going to get build up more so noticeably more sweetness. Okay, it's going to sit differently on your mouth and in your inside of your mouth after you swallow. And so if you're looking at these two teas and you're just trying to decide which one, which preferences do I really look for, or which teas do I really enjoy, and which ones are, how are they different, if I were to score them, I would give the premium an 88, I would give the nonpareil a 91. Uh, grades do matter, and tasting a tea goes beyond just those, those, those flavor profiles, those, the simple flavor profiles. So, Come back to Walker Tea Review to find out more about teas, grades, and going beyond the flavor profile.